Welcome back. Another essential element for any website is being able to persist some data. And of course, we do this through a database. Now, if you haven't worked with any frameworks before, you may not be familiar with the fact that typically frameworks will allow you to use many different databases. For example, you may use MySQL in your production server, but you may use SQLite for development or maybe Postgres or any other supported database. So in this episode, I want to get you set up with SQLite. SQLite is an SQL-like database that is actually file-based and requires very little configuration to get you started. There's a lot to cover in this episode, so let's get right to it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you a new file. If you scroll down, one of the files that are actually sitting in the root directory is this .env file. And if we open that file, you'll get the idea that this is the file responsible for setting up things like your database, your mail, once we start sending email, maybe your AWS, your Amazon, or Pusher. It's a lot of information on here. We're not going to go into a lot of detail in this file just yet. We're really only interested in this one line right here, db underscore connection. It defaults to MySQL, but like I said, I want to use SQLite. So we're going to replace that with SQLite, and then we actually need to erase the rest of these DB lines. So let's get rid of that and just leave DB underscore connection equals SQLite. Okay, now in our terminal, we actually need to create this file that SQLite is going to use to put our data into. And so to do that, we can run touch, and then we're going to dive into the database directory, and then we need to create a file called database.sqlite. And we hit enter. And when we do, all it does is create an empty file inside the database directory called database.sqlite. Now, a new concept that I'm going to bring you to is migrations. Now, migrations are the fix for some of the problems that you may encounter whenever you're trying to have a local environment, a production environment, and maybe even a middle staging environment. And that is that if you add, say, a column or a table, or you make a change to one of your tables, you have to go in and manually change this in every database instance that you are running. So that's how we fix that. Migrations modify your database in a way. Now, migrations by concept only run one time, and you only run migrations forward, meaning that in production, you don't typically roll back is the term that is used, which means that you're going to undoing a migration. If you need to revert a change, you would actually create a new migration, which reverse your database back to what it was. This concept of migration is something that's going to take a little while to get used to, but just know this migrations are your friend and they are an integral part of being able to work in a team. So the next command that we're going to run is the migrate command. So let's say PHP artisan migrate. Whoops, I made a typo. PHP artisan migrate. And there we go. And so we see that we created a users table and we created a passwords resets table. Not sure what that is just yet. Don't worry about it for now. But just know that Laravel actually ships with two migrations already. And so that's what just ran. What I want to do is start fetching our customers list from our database instead of hard coded. Let me show you what I have right now. If we go back to the customers controller, we have this hard coded list of customers. But of course, I want those to come from the database as you typically would. So back in my terminal, I need to create something called a model. A model represents a single row in your database, and it is responsible for saving, updating, deleting, or doing anything that you need for that particular row. So let's create a model. So if I have a table of customers, my model is a customer, right? Singular, not plural. So to make that model, we're going to use a new PHP artisan make command. So let me run PHP artisan, and let's go back to that make section. And here's the one that we're looking for make model. So the make model creates a new eloquent model class. Okay, let's run that command PHP artisan help make model. And so now we see that this command requires a name. But we also see that if you pass the flag dash M, then we get this migration file that I've been talking about. So this creates a new migration file for the model. 
So I do want that. So the full command is going to be PHP artisan make model customer singular dash M. So this is going to tell Laravel to make me a model for customers and in the process, go ahead and give me a migration as well. And typically models and migrations go hand in hand. You'll have a model and you'll have to create a table to hold that data. So let me go ahead and create that. And so now we see that we've successfully created a model and a migration. Back in PHP Storm, I can find this new migration. So let's scroll up. I'm going to close this app and we're actually looking for database. It's a new directory in your root. And then inside database, we have migrations. And then the last one here, we see create customers table. And if we double click that, we see a class that basically describes this customers table. Now, so far, there's not much in here, except we see that we have an ID column and we have these timestamps. Don't worry about the timestamps for now. We'll touch on that later on. So what if I wanted to have a customer's name? Okay, well, let's go ahead and add table, arrow, a string, and we'll just call it name. And that's good enough for now. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to head back to my terminal. So now we need to migrate our database, right? We've added a new migration. So I need to migrate right now. My database only has the default tables and it doesn't have this customer table in it. PHP artisan migrate. And now we see that we are migrated and we have this customers table added to our database. Okay. So now how do we generate some data inside of that table? Well, for that, we're going to use another Laravel trick, which is an awesome tool called Tinker. And you do that by running PHP Artisan Tinker. And Tinker is a shell which basically runs PHP. You can write any PHP command in here and it will run it as if you had written it in a script. It's very cool. We have this customer model. And let's just say that I want to fetch all of the data inside of it. So you would say customer colon colon all parentheses and of course we get back an empty array there are no customers inside just there so let's create a new customer so I'm going to say customer equals new customer and then let's set the name to John Doe hit enter okay and then we need to persist it so customer save and save that record and it returns true. So now we have a customer in our database. Let's run customer all one more time. And now we do see that we have one entry where before we got an empty array. Now we have one customer called John Doe. Okay, fair enough. Let's go back to our controller. So I'm back in customer controller and I want to replace this data with that one customer. So we'll say my customers are going to come from customer. So we'll say customer colon colon all. And so now we have a list of customers. Now, if I want to preview what we're actually getting back from this, I can add DD as a function and then let's pass in customers. Let's go back to the browser and check out what we have. If we hit refresh, then of course we see that we have one customer and we see here in attributes that their name is John Doe. So we're looking for this name variable at this point. Okay, let's go back to PHP storm. Let's get rid of this. And I bet you everything's going to blow up now. Yeah, not quite what we had in mind. So now we are getting a big list of items and we are no longer getting exactly what we needed. Easiest way to fix this is just to target the name, right? That's the only thing that we are interested in. Now, because we're using a database now, of course, you have things like ID and you have these created at and updated at timestamps, which we're not interested in right now. So we're targeting this name. So let's change our view. So let's go back to my customer view, customer.blade.php. And so now we're not just targeting customer, but I want the customer's name. Let's hit refresh. And there we are. So now we have one customer coming from our database. Let's add another one, new customer. And then let's call this new customer. Let's add a name of Jane Doe. And let's save that customer save. And that equals to true. Let's go back to the browser, hit refresh. So there we are. 
we are fetching two customers from our database. Now we covered a lot of ground in this episode, so if you didn't catch all of it the first time around, make sure to rewatch it a couple of times. These types of concepts of migrations and models and database are difficult concepts to understand. So don't feel frustrated, just keep rewatching, and when you're ready, let's move on to something else.